Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Paolo Triani and today I want to talk about the Oculus Quest and the Rift S which came out Tuesday and uh, I think a lot of us have got these headsets and we can't wait to uh, use them and we have been for uh, ages now and uh, I'm going to really give my personal opinion with them. Uh, so so I'll start probably with the, uh, the Quest as the Quest is one of the the biggest, um, uh, the the biggest kind of headset. I think everyone's calling it Questmus on Tuesday, and no one bothered calling it the Rift S Mus, even though I think the Rift S surprised me more than the Quest did. I mean, I knew what the Quest was going to be like. I had a feeling I kind of got it. I thought the graphics might be a bit better with the brand called um, Snapdragon that's in it, because we know the Snapdragon's two years old, so it's not like fantastic, but air cooled. It, it would be a bit better and it probably is a bit better but um yeah yeah it's it is kind of a, it's it well i'm gonna get into it i'm gonna get into it um i have actually got my uh, quest here in the actual case um i better open it because like people are just gonna believe that it's not in there or something <laughs> you know uh, yeah Here's, here's my Rift S, it's looking already uh, dusty and etc. We've got so many pets and so many children. It gets, this house gets very dusty very quickly. Uh, so anyway, the Quest. I'm going to compare the screen right now to the Samsung Odyssey. Now the Samsung Odyssey it's a pretty decent headset. This is an actual, uh, an original Samsung Odyssey. This is not the Plus model. So this doesn't come with the uh, the modifications to the comfort and um, screen door effect that they added, which some people like, some people don't like. And yes, it's summer flies in the house. Um, so basically, the reason why I'm comparing it to this screen is because I think it is a lot like this screen um, in a lot of respect. It's almost like the lenses feel the same, the screen feels the same. I'd say that um, the IPD, my IPD is quite low, it's about 60 millimeters. And when I dial it in on this, it will uh, create blurring around the edges of the screen, where if it's dialed higher up, it, it, that tends to go. With the Quest, that, you know, that is very, dependent on each individual game because you know you've got boviated rendering in some games so you're never going to tell um where you, you you won't probably with this unless you you know put boviated rendered in the options like in contractors where it gives you an option for that doesn't it um but i think the screens are pretty much the same the only reason this one probably has a slightly better screen is i think the god rays are a little bit better in this than they are on the quest i think the quest has um, noticeably actually quite a bit god rays it's better than the original rift and the vive and it but it's it, it's there you notice it. It, it well i notice it most, most people might not notice it. i'm very sensitive to god rays it's like being you know it's, it's in my head i by the way i don't even think the uh, screen draw effects that bad on the original uh samsung you know i can live past it you know you sometimes you see it but you just go past it you know why it's there it's, it doesn't bother me as much and it's the same with the quest um i kind of feel that you know when you put the quest on the screen door effect isn't doesn't really bother me too much the god rays can bother me but you know you know how god rays work you know black screen white white right in front that's when it sort of hits you the most other times you, you know you won't notice it as much um so you know that's generally the screen um I don't notice really any distortions in it, but you know, like some games do have that voviated rendering on their quest, so you know you can't tell. The blacks are obviously great. I think the colours are it depends on the game again, but sometimes they can seem a little washed out. Um, I don't know if you've seen uh, comparison videos of what the Rift S, um, the Quest, and the Odyssey uh, look like, or something like that. But you can see that the the colors just pop a little bit more in the Rift S and the Odyssey than the Quest. And uh, this could be due to the fact that, you know, it's got the Snapdragon, it's got the Snapdragon in there again. And um, they just have to tone down a little bit on some of the stuff that they would normally put in there that would pop out. And 
and I wouldn't say that's in every game. I think there's some games where the colours can just be uh, amazing. It obviously, uh, what I'm basically saying is the screen is capable of showing some really good colours, but some games are just dull. Um, and that's, you know, like, I think Moss probably looks duller, a um, little bit more washy than, you know, what it would look on the uh, the Odyssey Plus, uh, or the Odyssey OG that I've got, sorry. And... Uh, uh, the comfort. I'm going to go into the comfort now. It's mixed bags with the comfort. Some people think it's good. Some people don't think it's good. And some people have done advice from other people about how they can make their quest uh, much more comfortable. Um, yeah, like wearing a baseball cap lower on the head part would make it more comfortable and all that. But uh, not many people talk about. It. I don't think. Maybe they do, I just don't tend to, I'm not really on Reddit right now, like looking through it all because it's kind of like, uh, almost like uh, stuff that I'm not available to help with, with people with that have problems with certain headsets and uh, etc. Uh, and also I'm too much enjoying these headsets to really go on there and listen to, um, uh, listen to that right now, because <laughs> I just want to play the headset. In fact, I'm, you know, I want to play it right now. Um, so, but with me, uh, because of my IPD, it's quite low. Sometimes if I bring in an IPD too low, the um, lenses will come just literally, literally side by side, and then it will like rest literally on top of my nose. It'll perch just here. And after a while, this bit will ache, and I will ache across here as well, because also one of the things I can't stress I will understand logically in my head why Oculus did this is that with the Quest, they went with the baseball cap design of the original Quest. And the original Quest I liked, yeah. It, it took a while, and when I first went from some like the PlayStation Halo to the Quest, it took me a while to adjust, but when I did adjust and I changed the front cover to a, a nice um, felt leather like one, it was, uh, it was quite nice. Um, uh, but on the Quest, they went with the Rift, Rift S. They went with a the Halo design again, kind of. Um, this is uh, a little bit like the PlayStation VR one, but also like the Quest one at the back end because it doesn't have the button to release. You have to literally twist it. Um, but it does have the front part, which goes in and out. Um, this design is... Uh, well, I'm going to go on about the comfort about this later on. But this design is what I would call easy to put on. It doesn't matter what head you put it on you know if you put it on a child it's pretty quick if you put it on you know the mountain it, you know that's obviously before the hound put the knife through his eye but <laughs> it would fit pretty well um and it's quick so I, I i don't understand why that wouldn't be on the quest you know because the quest at the moment's got the baseball cap one and it takes a while to you know zip you know to get it to fit someone and if you've got a big party of people coming around and they're all, you know, you want to, you know, you want them to shit themselves. So you've got them like watching uh, something really scary, like Face Your Fears 2 or something. You're going to have to sit there, you know, zipping this thing around and getting it all to fit just nicely and comfortably. And, um, you know, it just takes that a little bit longer. And I kind of thought for a mobile headset, you know, a quicker, snappier solution to get it on your head and off your head would be fantastic. I mean, it's great if you, it's just you that's using it, um, then that, that's fine. You know, you just get it to fit perfectly for your head. You've got it all set up. It just goes straight back on again. But and then if you're going like me, you're going from uh, like an, a 10 year old child to, to, to my head um, or, or my wife's head, for instance, this is, you know, you just got different, you know, different size heads, you know, so you have to keep messing around with it. Um, so I don't really like that part of it as well. I don't understand why they didn't go with something more simplistic. And I know the hate. I know lots of people can say, "Well, it's heavier," uh, and that, and that's kind of true. It would probably be heavier if they did do something like that. But at the same time, it probably would balance that weight more, and you wouldn't feel it as much. Where at the moment, it 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 kind of is front heavy a little bit. And even if you get it right, it's still going to be front heavy because that's just science. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> so, you know, obviously you probably won't feel it as much because you've got it set up properly and lowered at the back of your head and etc. But yeah, I mean, Halo would have been quicker, uh, you know, for uh, people that want to go around and show it to people, you know. Um, 
that would have probably been a better choice. I'm going to go uh, talk about the games. The games, um, 50 games and experiences. Now this is interesting because we want games. Well, I want games. Experiences. Uh, I, I know that Vader and Mortal would be considered as an experience, but I actually really loved Vader and Mortal. It kind of was nostalgic. It was nice holding a lightsaber. It was the story where uh, Vader, you know, uh, uh, crouches down after seeing his uh, I can't remember her name actually it's a bit stupid of me uh, was pretty uh, emotional I thought and uh, yeah I quite liked it he obviously was really heavily voviated um, so you know you, you were looking at a smaller part of it but as long as you were looking forward the, the game actually looked pretty decent obviously the textures were washed out but I mean we're talking about a mobile chip here so you know you would expect that and I, I actually quite like that you know and the freedom, everyone keeps going on like, oh, the freedom's amazing, it's amazing, but I, I'm one person that doesn't really get that, big. and I think the reason why I don't get that is because I don't really have the play space, and I think you need the play space to enjoy that freedom. So, you know, if you've got uh, uh, a very small play space, or you've got so many pets where you're sort of like tripping over them every five seconds, and there's like a toy on the ground that your kids just left there, and even though you cleaned it away a second ago, it's, it's back there again, and... Uh, you know, and then, you know, you've got people walking around you all the time. It's, it's I, I don't know, it just doesn't feel as uh, freeing as I'd like. So, yeah, I need to move and get a bigger house and sell the kids and their toys and the pets. Keep the wife. She does things in the bedroom. Yeah, keep her. Right. So, <laughs> that's staying in. <laughs> that's going to stay in. Um So I, I, I don't think it's bad. And I played Journey of the Gods and the graphics there is like, what well, you know, why? You know, you probably could have done a bit more, but the gameplay does seem actually really good. And, and if you've got to remember, it's all about gameplay. I mean, when um, Zelda Breath of the Wild got Game of the Year, it didn't get Game of the Year because it was graphically intense. It got Game of the Year because the gameplay was just damn good. And, you know, if you've got those games on a, on a, on a mobile platform like the Quest, it's going to be amazing and you know i think that you know that's what oculus needs to try to achieve really uh, and i've seen that with the journey of the gods i've seen that like you know we really know what beat saber's like and that's pretty damn good um uh and there's tons tons of options really i've got apex i'm not even started that yet uh I, i've played it on the uh rift the original og rift but i haven't actually uh tried it on the uh on the quest yet so I can't get my hands on it half the time. So uh, I think the games are pretty good for what it can do. And I honestly think that Job Simulator is better on the Quest than it would be on the PlayStation VR, which is saying a lot because I think the resolution makes a big difference. You know, if, if it just looks a little sharper and yes, it's got like less graphics in it, it just feels a bit better. It's it's a bit more harder to look at something that's kind of a bit more blurrier. But yeah, it's got a lot more stuff going on. But Job Simulator definitely, I think, is 100% is better on the Quest. And it's more free on the Quest. You can literally do 360. Obviously, you can't do it on the PlayStation. What you can do with a headset, you can't really do it with the controllers. The hands, motion controllers, I think. Um, so I'm going to go to audio. And this is one of the most weirdest things I think I've ever felt with audio, if I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a bit of an audio file. I can be. Um, it doesn't really apply that much when it comes to games, because obviously you want your game to sound good. Um, but then when you've got like a, a, a game that's also got music in it, like Beat Saber, it, it needs to apply, the headset needs to really apply to all fields. And um, sadly, the Quest sound doesn't do that at the moment i uh, heard there might be a patch come in or something to fix it but as we all know there's no bass there, there is probably a bass that a dog could hear <laughs> you know but it is i've never seen that before i mean like how can you not have no bass it's just it's it's crystal clear sound it's an absolutely beautiful sound that comes out of those speakers um but there's no bass so if you're playing an RTS game, which there isn't any strategy games, I believe, on the Quest at the moment, uh, it's completely void of uh, strategy games. 
Um, but if you're playing something like that, it you know you could live with those. You know, if it was a quick fix, you could live with it. But if you're going to play Beat Saber, there's no way in the world you should be. You know, Beat Saber's very bassy songs on there, and with with having no bass, it's just it's. You know, Beat Saber would just never be popular today if everyone had those speakers. Um, they're, they're terrible speakers. Uh, uh, but the thing is, it's, just, it's not a problem. You know, why make that into a problem? Buy some earbuds. Buy, buy some headphones. You've got some good headphones. Everyone's got earbuds and headphones. Probably not good ones, but most of you got good ones. I mean, like, I've got, just sitting here on the stand, uh, the HyperX um, Alpha Pros with uh, the dual chamber. So it's got like a separate area for bass which can separate and then you can still hear the footsteps. You know, in shooting games and etc. Um, competitive, they are. They don't sound super great in Beat Saber, but they're amazing, something like Apex Legends where you can hear footsteps from miles away. You know, like you'd be one of those people that goes, oh, I can hear someone just there and everyone's like, what? what? How can you hear that? What the hell? You know, you, you hack in, uh, I've got good power headphones. And anyone that's got HyperXs will tell you that, or a good pair of headphones. Um, the issue with that is that, you know, even though the bass is better on that than most because of that dual chamber thing, um, it's not, you know, you, you're probably going to want to prioritize what kind of headset you want for what you're playing. So with Beat Saber, something that you would normally use for music, it's going to sound miles better than a gaming headset, probably, you know, so. Um, and I've got these earbuds, these uh, AKGs on my Samsung uh, 8. Uh, and my Samsung 8, uh, it's got the same processor, believe it or not, as the uh, Quest. So I put these in it, and the bass on these are nuts. I mean, Beat Saber with these are absolutely amazing. It's very clear and very good. I'm, I'm surprised because I've never been an earbud fan. You know, the smallest drivers you could ever think of, and yet they sound amazing if you say you saber. But would I want that in Final Assault or something like that? You know, probably not. No, no, I probably would go for the uh, my Riggs uh, 400s. I've got Riggs 400s as well sitting around somewhere, or I probably would just listen to the sound that they've got on there because it's a strategy game. Like I said, it's probably not got a lot of bass in it anyway. Um, so that's the sound. So it's not great, but it's not a problem because you can just plug in an alternative. It's it's not an issue. Now, issues I have found, obviously, with God Rays, um, slight screen door effect and slight discomfort for me. Um, but that that's about it. But I'm missing tracking, haven't I? The tracking. The tracking at the moment you've not heard anyone probably complain as much about the tracking on the Quest compared to say the Rift S and there's a good reason for that um, the games easily all work with that kind of tracking they probably would work pretty well with Windows Mixed Reality if I'm going to be honest with you I used to play Beat Saber with uh, the Samsung Odyssey and uh, yeah sometimes it could lose tracking if I was flailing about too much um, but if I you know if I knew my limits I, I could you know, I could get some pretty decent high scores. In fact, I've only just managed to beat my high score with the Rift S that I did on my Odyssey ages ago. Um, it was really, really a challenge. Um, so I'd say the tracking is pretty good for what it is. If we get something like Onward, I know we're getting Pavlov on the quest, but I think Pavlov kind of works pretty well anyway. Uh, I tried it yesterday on the Rift S and it, it seems to be the best shooter so far for the Rift S where Onward I think was the worst I think Contractors you can play around with the settings and get something better out of it but Onward yeah that was just the tracking was bad but if you got that onto something like the Quest maybe we would know how bad the tracking is for shooters this is just where it kind of lies I, I can you know you know if we ever get a game like that i mean obviously we're getting a pavlov but i think pavlov will be fine we'll we'll have to wait and see and i think if they're going to make the pavlov work on the quest they're, they're going to make it work on the quest they're not just going to port it over and say oh yeah but your gun's going to stick you know from, from the tracking um and this is an interesting part people hold guns sorry people hold guns very differently and i've noticed this as well because when people are like doing windows mixed reality 
um, headsets. They're like, oh, the tracking's fine in games like Contractors and uh, Onward. You know, you hold your gun, you know, like this, and you know, I'm 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 fine. And I'm like, well, you know, that would be fine. But in order for me to see the red through the red dot of my sight, I've I'm literally, you know, I'm like this, you know, and uh, that is too close. That that would be too close. A gun stop would help move this around. So there is that. Um, but yeah, the quest is yet to be found out if uh, it'll be good for shooters. But everything else, I th I'd say, yeah, I've I've lost tracking probably once or something in Beat Saber, and um, it's not been that much of an issue. So. Uh, yeah so requests where would I put it I'd say it's it, it's a must if you're hugely into VR and uh, you, you go commuting places or you go holiday a lot uh, you, you know take it with you if you have lots of parties it's it's fantastic I think it's a big party I think it's, you'll beat the switch I mean not switch the well, the Switch is one, but I, I mean the Wii. When when the Wii came out, it was a big party thing. Everybody was like playing it, like you know. Um, I think this would replace that. I think it has a good opportunity to replace that, and I think it's got a good opportunity to bring more people into VR as well because it's so much better than having a uh, a, a, mo a mobile phone put into something. You know, it's it's far better than that because you got you got complete freedom. You have got six offs, six off lungrens, lungrens. I can't say that name. You got six stuff, which I don't fully understand what that means because I never bothered looking. I think that kind of was uh, up and down is one, and left and right is two or something. You know, circle is three, maybe going round is four. I don't know. Moving up and backwards and forwards is five. You know, you can just basically move wherever. Um, where three is just the movement of your head, but you can't do this in it, right? Something like that must be painful <laughs> that's why i never got to go because i just thought nah i ain't having that anyway i'm gonna go on to the rift quest uh rift um s sorry and um this thing um i wasn't having much expectations of this thing i was thinking this might be a return and i'll keep my index when it arrives uh, my index is on reserve it's not actually um my index isn't uh, first day, sadly. Uh, I couldn't make my mind up if I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have that kind of money. So I'm kind of glad it's reserved. It gives me an opportunity to get that kind of money. But I thought this was going to be a return. When I stuck this on my head, first thing I noticed is how comfortable it is. It's probably one of the most comfortable headsets I've ever worn. And that's saying a lot because I've got PlayStation VR as well. And this thing's comfortable. I think it's. I think it's a lot more comfortable than this. This, a lot of people had comfort problems with this. I didn't have that much comfort problems with this. Yes, the nodes thing is a bit uncomfortable, but uh, it was pretty good when it came to uh, not letting in light and etc. This is pretty much the same. The Quest, by the way, lets in light a little bit. You can actually adjust it so it doesn't, but uh, you might. It really depends on how you adjust it. But this is this is not too bad. But the comfort. Is incredible. I do think that the this thing is almost useless because it's that it barely comes out. Um, but it is really, really comfortable. I probably don't even need this bit at the top here. If I'm going to be honest with you, but it's nice having it there regardless. But it is really, really comfortable. Going into the audio on this, you know, same thing with the Quest. Okay, so if you want to know about the audio on this, just listen to the Quest one. It's Pretty much similar, you know, you've got like ports to put in your own sound. This is the Halo design, and it is really, really, really good for a Halo design. But it doesn't have the button on the back like the PlayStation, which is a bit of a shame because that is really just a bit quicker, you know, you just snap straight out of your head and all that. With this one here, it's like you get your design of head and it will fit and it will fit again, it will fit again. Um, I personally like resting this more on my head than actually putting it on my head because it just, it just doesn't feel like it's there. It's, it's, it's actually heavier, I believe, than the original Quest, but it just, oh, it's just so comfortable. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but um, 
We might have to go to a cutaway to explain it. Okay, right, so. Other than the comfort, when you put it on and all that, it, it does feel like it get, it, you, you would get warm in it. And summer's approaching and, you know, it's, it's been really hot the last few days. And I think that there is a good chance that you're going to sweat tons in this. And that could become a problem. Obviously, you can change out the covers later on. Um, but I do think it could get hot. Other than that, it's very comfortable. Uh, I, I'm very impressed with the comfort design of this. It's just the most comfortable headset I think I've ever worn. And I've worn them all pretty much. Um, now going in, and this is the most important part, the screen is actually, the screen and the lenses are unbelievably good. Um, it's sharp, it's clear. There's hardly no guard rays. I can barely see the guard rays. The screen door effect is tiny. It's so tiny that oh, I don't even think I noticed it that much. Things up close are really, really sharp. So I think more sharper than the Samsung Odyssey. But as distance in games go on, like when you're looking off into the distance, I think this is where a 1600p screen actually does beat out the 1440p, even LCD. So, you know, if everything's like a certain distance away, this will look sharper, in my opinion. And then it slightly is the same. And then eventually the um, 1600p screen uh, that's OLED will, will then outperform the screen on this. But you can't deny how clear it is without the god rays and all the um, other imperfections that you'd normally get. It's, it's an absolutely amazing screen. If everyone says, is this an upgrade? It is. It really is. It's like getting a 1600p screen and not a 1440p. It's, it really is a pretty decent upgrade. Obviously minus the audio, but then like I said, the audio is a quick fix. Um, and the blacks are pretty damn good. I'm pretty impressed with the blacks in this. Um, I didn't think I would be. There is moments where I've noticed it. Obviously, I'm going to notice it. But there's moments where I've said to myself, hold on, wait. I, I was playing, was it Wolf in the Walls? And that's quite dark. Yeah, it starts off quite dark, for sure. Like, you're in you're complete darkness, and then you see her, and then you suddenly just think, oh, that's pretty black. That's pretty damn black. Uh, and you're thinking, wow, that's, you know, how, you know, Paolo Triani sounds really racist. <laughs> no. No, it's, it, it, it is really, really, really good. The blacks in this is really, really good. Um, and I'm quite impressed with that, actually. So if anyone's going on about, oh, no, you got rid of the OLED blacks, blah, blah, blah. That's not a problem. Obviously, the other OLED parts are. And sometimes when you get areas that can't do the other types of blacks and it's, it comes a bit more grayish and you do notice it you also notice that it harms the colors a little as well they don't pop as much as they probably would on an oled and i've kind of noticed this as well i've also noticed there is blurring around the edges and they didn't have that on the uh, original quest or not for me anyway i think some people got distortion and blurring around the edges on the original quest i think it's person to person or unit to unit um but this one here, it's it's ultra clear, but there's about a millimeter of blurring around the edges. And then sometimes that millimeter blurring can actually be distortion as well. And I think there was a game where it was bigger than it was like three millimeters of distortion. And I don't know how that's even possible because it should be the same in every game, unless the field of view has changed in some manner. Um, I think that game was Contractors, uh, I believe. So, you, the, you might see some distortions right at the edge. I don't think anyone's going to notice it unless you're really sensitive to it. And I know some people in the VR community that are sensitive to it, so I'd love to see if their units are like that, or it's just mine. But like I said, I've only seen that in one game. One millimeter is nothing to cry about, and in most games I don't see it at all. So that's fantastic. Um, God, I could talk about how sharp this thing looks at close range. It's just super sharp. It's just super clear. It's uh, It's... It's incredible. I'm going to go into the IPD set. Now, you, I've said that I'm 60 millimeters. This thing's about what well, sits in the middle at 64, 65, isn't it? And there's people that bought this with 70, well, 71 millimeter IPD, and, uh, and it's not got an adjustment software adjusted. And 
So they've gone like, yeah, it doesn't work. I'm sending it back. I'm pissed. <laughs> like, well, were you completely dumb or something? Of course it's not going to work. I'm like, but then, like, you know, it should be working for me at 60 millimeters, really. And it, and it does. It, 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 it's really clear. I'm really impressed. I don't. The weirdest thing is, though, is that when it's 65, it doesn't feel blurry. And then I change it to 60, and it, it doesn't feel blurry. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's even working, the IPD adjustment. I'm, I'm going to play around with it a bit more, I think. But at the moment, I know it's clear for me, and that's important. But if you're really, really worried about that IPD, mm, I don't know if you should probably get it. But you can always take a pump, because Oculus is not that bad for returns. It's not, you know, like going to say to some other company then but i'm not going to do that um you know um there's some companies out there that probably wouldn't let it be easy to return uh stuff to uh, i'm sure you probably know what that is um however this is <laughs> this should be easy enough to be able to return especially if you bought it from somewhere like amazon um i'm going to go on to tracking this has five cameras one there one there one there one there one on top now that kind of makes it really easy to track something pretty much anywhere and everywhere and i think this tracking is actually an improvement over windows mixed reality tracking but and then this is a big but they still haven't fixed the hard problem of having a um, controller too close to the camera like so if you do play a game like onward you're still gonna get tracking loss and that in a competitive game ain't gonna cut it there is ways around it you buy a gun stock um you know uh you can adjust it and i'm sure that you know this is new they may have to get around it you know if onward devs might have to do something about that or you could just hold your gun differently um personally to me um uh, that was kind of off pain uh, there isn't a whole lot of shooting games out there uh, and I think I, I have been wanting to go away from shooters for a while and I did that with my Samsung Odyssey because you know that's uh, even worse for tracking in shooters but this has improved I, when it comes to bows though and I heard people say like when they were using bows they they were losing tracking on this I haven't been losing tracking on bows whatsoever I've been playing in depth I haven't played the lab because I actually had installed the lab and I can't be asked to reinstall it, but I have used the bow in the Oculus uh, home because I've got a bow in there as well. And like I said, in depth and uh, Apex. Um, and it all worked fine. I've had no problems with that. But with shooting gun, shooting games, I, you know, where you've, you've got a gun to your, you know, your shoulder and all that, and then you're looking down the sight like you would if you were at a real range. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, this, you know, I, this, they've got to get around that problem. And I think they probably will. So stick with it if you, you know, not too bothered. If you're somebody that just plays shooters, mm, I'd probably wait. Yeah, I wouldn't go out and buy one. I definitely would wait. But uh, yeah, the tracking's been flawless for me. I, I've heard tons of people have problems with the tracking. And um, I don't know what that is. You know, it could be a ton of things. So th this is the problem with PC hardware. Everyone assumes it's probably this, but it's, it's, it's more likely not this. <laughs> it's more likely the PCs, you know, or, or, the, or the software with, with Oculus, you know. And some people come up with solutions with changing USB ports around, and that's worked for some people. But for other people, it hasn't. And, and for other people, taking all their USBs out and just putting one in there, has worked so that probably says something about the rails on your uh, motherboard and the CPU. So your CPU probably hasn't got the bandwidth for allocated bandwidth enough for those USBs on that particular motherboard uh, that you've got. I've got an ASUS formula, uh, I think it's a 10 in mine, and um, it's it's oh, this. I've got it into the red and it's also got it's 3.1. So I've got my USB into the 3.1 and that, that, it's been brilliant. And I've also always have my PC on a uh, higher, highest power setting. To round it up, I, I, I kind of think the tracking is, is pretty decent. Um, and with the problems that people are having with it, um, I can't really 
help really this could be tons of different reasons uh but the thing is is just going on to reddit and probably saying something like i i lose tracking when i'm you know for a moment and here and here and here and you, and there isn't enough uh information to what pc you run in what motherboard you've got you know uh you know all the information that probably oculus need to find out why people are having that problem uh it, it is a problem on its own but yeah, yeah i do think that uh I, I don't have that problem so if i don't have that problem then it's either a faulty unit uh something wrong with the pc you know some sort of setup or something wrong with the software um but basically you know you can get to the state where i am uh and get better tracking of course like i said with shooting games you're not going to get better tracking uh unless you get gun stock or you you know, don't shoot like a normal person would shoot in real life, probably. Uh, just make sure it's away from the, uh, not too close to the camera. Uh, I think the other problems, I think some people mentioned other problems with this headset, and uh, I think it was like a white light, white light flash or something like that. I think I might have seen that once, you know, um, when I was pushing it in and out. But I wasn't too sure because it was so quick. Um, so, uh, the, other than that, yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like that. Um, I think that's that's okay. And then also the input lag as well, the controllers. Um, I've not seen that on the Quest. Not seen that on the Rift S neither. Uh, and I made a video on 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 that. Um, this is with the grip buttons and the actual physical buttons. Um, there's no lag on the physical buttons for me. There's put well, there's always going to be a lag, but obviously not a lag that's you know, causing a problem with my actual gameplay. Um, there's probably a few milliseconds and whatever uh, lag that you get with everything. Um, obviously the, uh, I'm gonna put this down now. Obviously the um, sensor buttons, the pressure sensor buttons, you know, when you put your thumb up uh, and when you point. Uh, when I point, I, I'm, I'm not getting that much lag at all, but with the thumb up, I'm getting a little bit of lag, but I think that was in an original rift and i don't think it's that much of a problem because when you put your thumb up you, you know it's not like a life-saving thing you know it's just normally a social thing so it's it's a kind of okay really um i don't have a problem with that the next thing i want to talk about is the controllers because the quest controllers and the rift controllers are basically the same they're like the touch uh controllers i do say that i the original og rift controller I liked in a lot of respects in one it just uh, it, you, you had somewhere for your thumb to sit didn't you before and sometimes I'm noticing my thumb is actually sitting here and when that happens my thumbs is up you know it's already up so in a game where you you know you put your thumbs up it, my thumbs up because I'm not sitting on the actual sensor uh it's not really an issue that's just you know me having to get used to it but the other thing is like you've seen me put my thumb up right I, i'm hitting the ring now and then but not a problem really not that big a problem this is lighter i like that it does really feel like it's not in your hands you can buy straps that actually strap this to your hand like the knuckle controllers can do which is pretty cool because that's one of my things i like about the knuckle controller so I, you know i can't wait to try that on the knuckle controllers um my biggest gripe and I don't know why, I never had this problem with the touch controllers, the original touch controllers, is that when I'm playing something like Beat Saber, um, I'm accidentally hitting the Oculus button uh, every now and then, and then that will send me into the menu. It's just Beat Saber as well, by the way. That will send me into the menu, and then I'll have to hit it again, and then I'll have to continue, and then I might miss a note or something because uh, I might hit miss a block, sorry, uh, because you know I have to do all that, and I'll be like, oh damn, this was on its way to being a high score. So you know that that's a problem. I don't know if anyone else has had that problem by accidentally hitting the Oculus buttons. Uh, uh, other than that, I think um, what everyone said about this being a little easy to pull, I noticed that on Beat Saber as well. It just seems to be just Beat Saber at the moment, but I'm sure there's other games that are similar to that that will. Pull this away a little bit, but I've also had that problem on the. Uh, wait a second. Uh, on the window mixed reality ones as well. I've had this quite easily pop off whilst playing Beat Saber. 
uh, on my right hand. It's the same hand. It's almost always the right hand. The right hand always seems to just want to pull pull it apart. I don't really get that. Uh, why that would want to pull it off when, when you're in beats over. But yeah, other than that, the control is amazing. It really is. I mean, we all know that touch control is amazing. It's ergonomic. It feels really, really nice. Um, you've got two motion, you know, you've got your index finger and your thumb. And let's face it, your index finger and your thumb is probably one of the most important things in the game. You know, you just press things and you can go, hey, you know, or even put a fingerprint on there, you know, a thumbprint. It's pretty decent. Um, the other fingers that you're going to get with the knuckles, you know, are probably going to be used more for just gripping, right? Which I can't wait to try. Um, obviously, squeezing is the, is the, it's going to be the trick of the knuckles, right? Um, but I do like, I do love these controllers, and I do really like the old ones as well. I, I think that I like this just a bit better. I'm not too sure. Um, now, some people said they preferred the strap on this. I'm not entirely sure if I like this kind of strap. Uh, it feels, some people say it feels kind of leathery and it kind of does a little bit, but it also feels a bit plasticky. Not entirely sure about this strap. Might actually get that thing that kind of like, you know, holds it to your wrist so it becomes kind of like an Apple control like thing. I think that would be really, really good. But I've not had any problems with these so far. And one of the things, you know, you're going to love about this is the track, um, the tracking. <laughs> The um, battery life is absolutely amazing. I don't know if the battery life's better or the same. I would assume it's not the same because now it has to operate lights more here. Uh, I think these lights are going to have to be more prominent, right? Might be the same. Might be the same battery life, but it's good battery life. This is a good thing about it. The, the Windows Mixed Reality ones, they only last a day. If I'm playing for six hours they seem to run out pretty quickly well they seem to still warn you pretty quickly i mean you can just restart them and start them uh turn them off and start them up again and it'll give you 30 percent it'll give you another 15 minutes or something but it just can't yeah windows mixed reality batteries just you could go through them you, you know you, you'll be recycling the rechargeable ones quite often and then killing them so the batteries in this are damn good in my opinion um, and I really like that kind of battery life um, so much better than pretty much anything that takes a battery in it if I'm going to be honest there's the Xbox controller as well um, the battery goes pretty quickly in that as well uh, and I think that kind of yeah uh, rounds it all up really isn't it I think yeah I think when it comes to this the Rift S hmm, is it an upgrade from the original this is very dependent, isn't it? Uh, if IPD is a concern, then no. If you like playing a lot of shooters and you're not willing to change to a gun stock or something, then no. Is the clarity better? Yes, it's, it's, it's miles better. Is the comfort better? Yes, it's, it's miles better. Is it easy to set up? Yes. Is, it, is one of your sensors going to go down because, like, you know, mold is starting to get into the usb port of the flipping you know wherever you put your sensor on the wall or which i i had a problem with not that long ago then this would be an upgrade the inside out track and just make it a lot more easier make sure you got the hardware because the weirdest thing is is even though this says like it'll probably run as like a 970 or something i don't know what it says though um graphics cost is one thing but it doesn't tell you about the cpu as well and clearly you know you're going to need a cpu that's good enough to power up uh, the bandwidth on the USB because we're not talking about the voltage here we're talking more about the uh, well a lot of people are saying due to the power settings that it could be the voltage but it could also be the bandwidth and if you're not putting it in the right place the bandwidth could be a concern um, and if you haven't got the right CPU or motherboard that could also be a concern and so if your motherboard takes a type C or a 3.1 USB connector then I, I think that you could be all right with this but you, Obviously, you can't plug it into a Type-C because it's only a USB. There might be a connector in the future for um, Virtual Link. So if you've got an RTX card, you're going to probably be OK. Um, but if none of those things are your problems, uh, I think this is an upgrade. I don't think the audio comes into account because you can add your own. 
um, and I think that's fine. Bit of a nuisance to do that sometimes, but with some like earbuds, like I said, with these ones here, um, they're, they're damn good. And you can buy some dual chamber, um, well, even dual driver earbuds. That are gonna sound pretty damn good, I reckon. Um, or you can, I've heard that you can use Mantis on this as well, which is like a, uh, and they sound pretty damn good from what I've heard. That used to be for the PlayStation VR, and you might have to pick up a second hand pair or you know, from a second hand shop, uh, it'll go eBay or whatever, or buy a brand new one or something like that, and then you've always got a pair of headphones there. But yes, I, I'm gonna go back and say that this is definitely an up, it is an upgrade for me. This the screen clarity is just like almost 1600p, more than 1600p close range at distance, obviously, it falls beyond below 1600p, but it's it's amazing um, and the clarity less god rays god rays oh they can give you a headache and this is just excellent with the um, frame rate of the headsets uh, I don't really notice the frame rate that badly the quest may be a bit more but with the Rift S it doesn't feel any different than night hertz of the original quest you know it feels identical it's, it's nice and buttery smooth and when it drops down to uh, 40 uh, I just, it's still pretty smooth not perfect but it's pretty damn good where if you had a Windows Mixed Reality headset it isn't <laughs> you know Windows Mix so when you got the Samsung you literally have to run that at 90 hertz to get the smoothest best in my opinion uh, that you can get out of it With where with this you could realistically play some games or most games I'd say on half that with a single warp, whatever they call it, and uh, it, it it's still playable, it's still very playable. You know, it might give you a headache. I mean, if you're playing something like from other suns at four, forty uh, hertz, it it might be unpleasant. But some games won't be like um, maybe final sort of strategy games like tabletop gods or something like that. I don't think that'd be bad. Obviously, tabletop gods probably won't need that anyway. But yeah, I think this is an upgrade. So my final conclusion is that. I'm extremely happy with the Rift S <laughs> and surprised because I didn't think it was going to be that good. I thought it was going to be just like a, a little bit of a difference and I'd be end up returning it and looking forward to my index. And uh, I'm actually quite surprised that I'm going to keep it. Um, and I'm actually going to now get rid of my Samsung Odyssey instead because, you know, God Rays plays a big part in my life and not having hardly any in the Rift S is fantastic. And that clarity is just beautiful and the comfort is just oh, amazing so as for the quest i think that's worth it as well there's many reasons to have a quest if you like vr kids like vr if your wife likes vr if your husband likes vr if your partner likes vr um you you know the quest is very good fun and it does what it does really well and i told you it's all about gameplay really and not always about graphics it's nice sometimes when you're in something that really immerses you because of the graphics it's just there but immersion can be happened by really good gameplay too and really good acting etc if the good storyline is just absolutely amazing and i think that with the quest it can just take you places that you wouldn't expect so if you don't own a vi headset the quest is amazing it would just be the best option in my opinion to get in a you know a powerful pc or a ps4 pro or whatever or the next ps5 uh, or get the oh no xbox don't have it <laughs> microsoft what are you doing wake up um so <laughs> so i think the quest and if you've even got a vr headset and you think oh god i love my vr i play vr all the time but then you know you have to go places you know i mean i'm gonna be going on holiday this year i'm gonna take my quest with me um even when I go to a barbecue, I might take it, you know, what, what the hell, you know, I mean, I'm not going to have it out in the sun. I know what everyone feels about that, you know, um, but, you know, yeah, it'll be like, everyone come inside, like, check this out, you know, buy one, you know, help the VR community. Let's grow because this is definitely a showpiece and you definitely want to show it to people. So, yeah, I, I think the verdict is get a quest. Everyone should have a quest. There's no argument not to have a quest. Yes, the God Rays are a little bit distracting, and yes, the Bobby Head rending can be pretty bad, but 
you can see past that stuff and eventually you know you can really enjoy it um, and i think when the games start coming flooding out more and more and more i think we're on to a winner here with this platform i think this is going to be really good and i think this really really puts a pedestal on for the cosmos when it comes out as well because the cosmos is just you know it's going to have a better cpu in it it's going to have a really good screen according to what they said it's going to have one of the best screens i've ever put in a uh, vi headset i don't know if that's including the index but it could be similar to the index and uh, that would mean probably a sharper screen uh, black's not as good but sharper screen and a better cpu and it can also be tethered to the pc probably so um that's fantastic so the cosmos is just yeah i think that this is just i think this quest is brilliant and i think the cosmos could then build on that in later on and then we could see a quest 2 and then cosmos 2 and and then eventually i think that ready player one here we go um thanks for watching and uh, if you liked the uh, rant uh just uh, throw me a like and a sub please uh, be very thankful bye